in this video, we'll be talking about insulation. Now, insulation is a made up word. It's not real. I mean, it's real, but it was made up to kind of summarize um, sunlight. Insulation really comes from incoming solar radiation. It's a shortened version of those three words. So that's what we're talking about in this video, sunlight. So things we know. The sun, the sun radiates energy. It radiates that energy to Earth. Some of that energy actually gets absorbed by the Earth's surface. Some of it gets bounced back into space. Some of it gets scattered. Some of it gets absorbed by clouds, reflected off of water, reflected off of ice. No matter what, only a fraction, 60% of sunlight actually gets to Earth. Now, of that 60% that gets the Earth, not every location on Earth is getting the same sunlight. It's going to vary uh, from place to place because of several different factors. So that's what this video will really deal with. What are the factors that affect insulation? So the first factor is the type of surface. Now we we talked about this already when we when we discussed heat energy. Um, the type of surface will really determine how much heat you absorb. Darker surfaces, rougher surfaces are going to absorb and hold on to more heat than lighter surfaces. All right, And then if we go a step further, if we compare land versus water, land is going to absorb more heat as compared to water. Um, when I say absorb, I just mean quicker. It's going to be able to take on that heat faster. So it's going to get hotter faster. And that's because of specific heat. Water really resists the change in temperature. So it takes a much longer time for water to warm up. And that's important because when you think about the earth, either you're surrounded by land or you're surrounded by water. So if you're surrounded by land, it's gonna get really hot around you and it's gonna get really cold around you too. If you're surrounded by water, it's kind of moderated. It's, it's kept in the middle. And you know that's because water takes a long time to warm up and a long time to cool down. Furthermore, if you're surrounded by sand, that's gonna impact the temperature of your region. If you're surrounded by ice, that's going to impact how your temperatures are going to be. If you're surrounded, if you're in a dark forest environment, that's going to affect what's going to be your temperature uh, and how much sunlight you can absorb because those are factors that are all really determining the absorption of sunlight. Our next factor is the angle of insulation. Now, this is a repeat of seasons. We, we've talked about this and should sound familiar. The closer the angle of insulation is to 90 degrees, the less atmospheres the sunlight passes through. And therefore, the higher the angle of insulation, the stronger the intensity of insulation is. Easiest way to describe it is this, using a flashlight to show the difference between focused light and spread out light. The more focused the light, the more intense the light. The more spread out the light, the less intense. So when the sun's at a higher angle, like at 90 degrees, it's going to have a higher intensity. When it's at a lower angle, like in this case, it gets all the way down to something like, you know, 30 something degrees, it's going to have a much less intensity. And in, included in that is how many atmospheres it needs to pass through. And the only way that I can really describe that is that the thickness of the atmosphere is affected by the curvature of the Earth. So in this hazy picture of our atmosphere, there are some areas where the atmosphere is going to be thicker than others because of how the Earth is curved. And if sunlight's coming in at a 90 degree angle, it's coming in in a way that there's less thickness to the atmosphere. Whereas if it comes in at a much lower angle, it's got to pass through much more layers to get to Earth. I know that sounds confusing, but just remember the higher the angle, the less atmosphere it has to pass through. That's really what it, 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 it really comes down to. So overall, as you increase the altitude of the sun, which means the angle of the sun, the stronger or the more intense insulation is. So it's a direct relationship. Our next factor that influences insulation is latitude. Probably already knew this, but 
Latitudes closer to the North and South Poles receive less insulation than latitudes nearer to the tropics and the equator. And that's probably something, as I said, you already knew, because when we go on vacation, we go south. And the reason we go south is because as we go south, there's more sunlight there. It's warmer. And that's because the latitude of those locations puts it in position to get more direct rays all year round. So as I increase my latitude, meaning I go closer and closer and closer to 90 degrees north or south, doesn't matter, my intensity of insulation will decrease. So they're indirectly related. Our next factor, the time of day. Our insulation, no matter what season you're in, is always going to be lowest in the morning and late afternoon, but also highest at the noon time. And that's because as the sun rises, it's at a lower angle, it goes back to angle of insulation, lower angle, low heat. Um, as it gets to noon, that's its highest, most direct position, no matter where you live, except for the North and South Pole, that's when you get the most focused rays. And then at sunset, it's back down low, so you get much less focused rays. So overall, this is kind of a weird relationship, but as you increase in the time of day, the intensity of sunlight is going to increase until noon and then decrease afternoon. And that brings us to our last factor, seasons. We've already discussed seasons in a lot of detail, so we're not going to go back through every aspect. But to sum it up, each season brings a different path of the sun and changes to the hours in the amount of daylight an area receives. So let's just look globally. Here's the Earth in its winter solstice position. This is December 21st and it's our winter solstice. When I say our, I'm talking about the entire northern hemisphere. On this date, the Tropic of Capricorn is receiving 90 degree rays. And uh, that's where the sunlight's focused and therefore it's um, hotter in the southern hemisphere. And uh, as you go up towards the North Pole, you get less and less intense light, which is why we have winter during this time of the year. Look at the summer solstice, it's the complete opposite on June 21st, because now the sunlight is directed at 90 degrees towards the Tropic of Cancer. And the northern hemisphere, is receiving more direct rays of sunlight and more intense rays of sunlight. And then on the equinox, the direct rays are focused towards the equator and the equator is receiving the most direct rays. And um, all the locations north and south of that get less and less sunlight, but overall, because of the black line that's going down the center of the earth in this picture, everywhere receives 12 hours of light. So again, seasons really are in control of um, why we have different amounts of uh, sunlight, hours, and also angles of insulation as the year goes on. So those are our factors. Now when I talk about angle of insulation for New York State, remember that for New York State, the path of the sun is always longer in the summer and shortest in the winter. And the sun reaches a noon position in the summer at 71 and a half degrees and uh, autumn spring position of 48 degrees at noon and then for winter it's 24 and a half degrees. So those are the factors that influence insulation for any location. In review, that was the type of surface, the angle of insulation, the time of day, the latitude of the location, and then finally the season that the location is experiencing. Thanks for watching.